Good morning and welcome to the Kila Chari Torah Daily Halacha Review for Thursday, May 27th. Uh, we've been talking about uh, various customs associated with weddings, particularly the chuppah. Uh, in the customs about preparing for the chuppah, uh, say that the parents of the bride and groom both bless their children before walking them down the aisle to the chuppah. The chas and the groom wears a white kittel to the chuppah. Some say this is because uh, white resembles, resembles the day of death. It'll cause the chasen to do tshuva. The chasen has the kittel placed on him by someone else. The custom is that one wears a different garment on top of the, of the kittel uh, in some circles. One should not place his left hand in the sleeve as a deviation from the normal way of wearing it. This is to remind one of the day of death, since this is the custom of availing. Uh, before going to the chuppah, according to some, ashes are placed on the groom's forehead in the place where the tefillin usually are. And the groom should say the verse, Imish kachech, if I forget the O Jerusalem. Although some say the custom is to remove the ashes immediately after putting them on, it seems that many people actually do leave the ashes on the forehead. Some, for those who put them on in the first place, some say that the kala also gets ashes placed on her forehead. Some do either, either the placing of the ashes or breaking of the glass. The custom of many is to do both. Si- uh, 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 emptying pockets and untying knots is the next section. Since the chuppah is a time for remembering uh, the day of death and doing tshuva, some say the chasm should empty his pockets to remind him that one does not take anything along uh, when one leaves this world. The custom is also to undo the knots of one's shoes, if you're wearing lace-up shoes, and the necktie. The reason that it was explained to me is that uh, the only kesha, the only uh, bond being uh, forged or tied at this point in the, person, in, the, in the couple's life is between themselves, so n- all other knots are inappropriate. Some think that giving away one's personal uh, belongings to friends before going to the chuppah is a segula. In reality, uh, we don't know of any such segula, but if one chooses to, one may, since one will, one's friends will make sure that uh, their belongings are watched properly. At the wedding of Adam and Eve, Adam and Chava, two angels escorted them to the chuppah. Therefore, that's from Sefer Matamim, Yep. Uh, uh, therefore, two people escort the bride and the groom. Another reason is that a chasna is like a king, and a king, of course, always goes with an escort. There's a discussion amongst posts about who should walk the chasna and kala to the chuppah. Some have the custom that both fathers walk the chasna and both mothers walk the kala. Others have the custom that uh, the parents of each walk down each. Uh, some have the custom that a pregnant woman should not walk down the aisle if her pregnancy is obvious. Concern for Ayan Hara, and many are not worried about this. Some posts can say that it's not advisable for a couple uh, who are married for the second time to walk their children, uh, walk down their children from the first marriage. Of course, many in fact do. Uh, many have the custom that the chasen steps forward when the kala approaches the chuppah. Uh, the chasen walks down to the chuppah first. Some say this is derived from the fact that, uh, that Hashem took Chava and brought her to Adam. The chasen and kala should walk with their right feet first, the father on the right side, the mother on the left. And those escorting the chasen and kala walk with lit candles, according to Sefer Harokea. Uh, some say the light is to show joy and happiness. Uh, the reason quoted in many of the Svarim uh, is, to, uh, is, to, uh, is because the word ner, the Hebrew word for ner for candle, is equal in gematria to 250. So two neras together equal 500. And that is the amount of limbs in a man and a woman's body, according to the tradition combined. Uh, still others say the wedding is like the giving of the Torah, as we mentioned the other day, and the giving of the Torah was with fire, so the chuppah is also conducted with a, uh, with a fire there. That's why we bring the candles to the chuppah. Okay, more on the background and uh, origin of these customs when we see each other again tomorrow. Have a good day.